Welcome friends to the 2023 Lexus NX350 F Sport review. If you're new to this channel, I've already done a full like 45 minute long review on the NX450H. So if you want to check that out, the plug-in hybrid review, I'll have that in the description box. So check it out after you're done watching this. So first I'm going to cover what's new for 2023, some of the exterior thoughts and my detailed driving impressions on this turbocharged four-cylinder 350 model along with my thoughts on the f-sport then we can talk about the interior and then we can conclude okay what's new for 2023 pretty much nothing <laughs> other than the fact that the price has now increased slightly other than that you don't really get any notable 2023 changes so we can gloss over that and then we can get into my exterior thoughts and the reason why i want to talk about this is because this particular test model is finished in atomic silver and in conjunction with this f sport model i mean it just looks amazing i love this color on lexus suvs it is one of the most premium paint options that i have seen on just about any new car honestly and when the sun hits it just right it almost has like this chrome like effect to it it's really an exotic paint job it's not just your regular everyday silver. I really do enjoy this. And because Lexus has such sharp lines in their design and pretty much all their cars, especially their SUVs like this, it just helps that atomic silver just shine even better. It just shows off those body lines. It's a really attractive color on these SUVs. And of course, the vehicle is all new and redesigned for the 2022 model years. You can leave your thoughts below regarding the new looks of the Lexus NX. I'm personally a huge fan. I personally think that this is one of the more attractive looking SUVs in the lineup now. Now, when you go with this F Sport model, like you see here, the F Sport is only available on the 350 models, like you see here, and the 450H plug-in hybrid. Is it worth getting? Well, I'll talk more about that throughout the review, but just from the exterior perspective, I'm loving the new blacked out grille and the 20 inch gloss black wheels. I think it looks absolutely excellent, especially with this atomic silver. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into some of these driving thoughts now. In my one week of testing this Lexus NX350 for you, I am really impressed with a lot of the driving dynamics of this vehicle and more importantly, I am very impressed with this drivetrain. We have here a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. I was very curious about this engine. I really wanted to try it out. Fortunately, it's doing everything I needed to do. It's smooth, it's quiet, and it's reasonably powerful okay we have 275 horsepower and 317 pounds feet of torque you do have to utilize premium fuel 91 octane make sure you do that it's a great engine it's phenomenal for daily driving it feels very effortless i mean you just put your foot down and you are off and it gives you a nice sensation of speed honestly one of the highlights to a lot of these lexus products was the naturally aspirated engines and you can still get one with the NX. It's just going to be the 250 model with that naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, which is significantly slower. And it's pretty much that RAV4 engine. I think it's got like 203 horsepower. And this 350 is kind of what you want, uh, especially out of a luxury product of this price point. It's the engine I would personally go with and probably have better residual value because of that. The only thing that I really require out of a four-cylinder engine is for it to be smooth and for it to be quiet. And this is doing both of those things really well. And this is all made it to a eight-speed automatic transmission. I will say uh, there is a slight bit of a delay when you initially get on that throttle and you floor it. But after that, the eight-speed automatic is super smooth. And this vehicle is rated to get 22 mpg in the city and 29 mpg out on the highway that's pretty accurate that's around what i'm getting but i totally understand with this new lexus nx generation what most people want is that 350h hybrid and the plug-in hybrid the 450h i can personally skip the 450h the uh, the plug-in that's not really necessary for me but that 350h that is pretty excellent but unfortunately with the current car market the way that it is there are crazy wait times associated with the 
350H hybrid. It's definitely the model that makes the most amount of sense for most families, but once again, good luck getting one. I know some people commented saying that it took them up to eight to nine months to get a hold of a 350H. So that's just insane to me. Fortunately, for those who are willing to go with this 350 with the turbocharged four cylinder, you're still getting a great product. You're getting a very quick vehicle. It makes it very satisfying to daily drive. I do like that power and speed. And speaking of that, I think uh, Car and Driver, they did some zero to 60 tests as always, and they rated this particular model to go zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. I think the NX350H Hybrid did in like 7.6 seconds, and then the 250 model, which is the naturally aspirated four cylinder, that did zero to 60 in like 8.6 seconds. So literally two seconds slower than this. Uh, that's why I can't really recommend that. But one of the biggest highlights for me with this Lexus NX, and actually with many Lexus products, and this is something that pretty much nobody gives Lexus credit for, is just how well these vehicles drive. I love the handling characteristic of this new Lexus NX. If you're coming from a previous generation NX, this is leaps and bounds ahead of that previous generation car that this is replacing. We have a strut suspension in the front and then we have a double wishbone rear suspension. But you don't need to get the F-Sport handling package for this vehicle to handle good. The NX450H plug-in hybrid was around four to 500 pounds heavier than this test vehicle here. And it still handled great. This F-Sport package, it's not even really helping the handling. What it's done is it's actually improved the ride quality and the smoothness of it. That's the enhancements that this F-Sport handling package has given you. And that is just so interesting. Very, very strange, but very interesting at the same time. Uh, with the F-Sport package, you will get a adaptive variable suspension. I mean, when I put the vehicle into sport mode, it doesn't really make a huge difference. It doesn't get stiffer or anything, but this car just has a great, neutral, confidence-inspiring feel. You know, good high speed stability, right? It's not being blown all over the place when I drive this thing out on the highway at higher speeds. Feels planted, feels sure footed. This vehicle weighs around 4,000 pounds the way you see it here with all wheel drive. Keep in mind, this is also the all wheel drive model. You can get front wheel drive, but that's only with the 250 model. So you can just fling it into these corners and it's really well done. I mean, there's no Your occupants, they're not being flipped over all over the place. You know, the vehicle just remains neutral. These kind of long sweeping corners, you don't have to let off the gas. You can still take some of these corners at some speed and just great. But as I mentioned, that previous 2022 NX that I tested, the 450H, it was heavier. It was not an F-Sport. But what is this F-Sport model doing better? It just, I don't know, it just feels a lot smoother. This steering rack... It's so perfectly tuned, it's not overweighted, doesn't feel stupid, it still feels nice, connected. I know what the vehicle is doing at all times. And there's no jostling effect, right? That unnecessary bobbling motion that you get when you go over certain bumps. This F-Sport model has eliminated that completely. So is the F-Sport model worth it? Yes, but it's gonna cost you. And that's my biggest problem with the F-Sport. It is very expensive. When I spec'd one out online the way I wanted it, it was like $55,600, I believe. But is that money worth it? I mean, it, it is certainly making a difference. I do like it. Once again, it's not necessarily improving the handling of things. I just feel like this is a smoother experience over sharper bumps, uh, small bumps, right? Jittery bumps, not an issue. This is riding on 20 inch wheels and on run flat tires, mind you. And this is still quiet. It's still smooth. Uh, these are Bridgestone run flat tires. They did a really great job with this. I don't mind that they went to this because it's so smooth and so well isolated. So yes, the handling is crisp, very satisfying. Uh, the other aspects I want to talk about with this NX350 F Sport is going to be, well, how quiet it is. We have double pane glass in the front, so nice thick glass, not too much wind noise here, even at the higher speeds, not too much tire noise. As I already mentioned, it feels like a well insulated, quiet machine. 
Uh, I used to not really like the Lexus NX. I really hated that previous generation model, but this new redesign is excellent. And I used to tell people just step up to the RX. Now you don't need to do that. If the NX works for you, your budget, and if the size works out for you, I say go for it. I really like this. I know you want the 350H hybrid models, but you know if this one, if this 350 model is laying around at your local dealership, I say go for it. This is still a great product. The fuel economy isn't bad uh, compared to the naturally aspirated V6. RX 350s, this is getting better real world fuel economy. And I guess before we end the driving review, I guess I can talk about some of these drive modes. Uh, you know, we can put it into the sport mode if you want to, but I really don't think that's necessary. The I don't I don't detect the suspension getting any stiffer, and I think the regular mode does a great job with the automatic transmission tuning. I think it's. Uh, more appropriate for daily driving and to keep the RPMs lower so you get better fuel economy. But if you want to, you know, you put into a sport mode, you want to play with the paddle shifters, you know, it's very satisfying. They're actually useful. They do a great job in reacting to your inputs. Again, not super crispy downshifts or upshifts, but it's very good if you need to use it for mountain driving or things of that nature. Uh, it's very good. You can certainly rely on it. But yeah, that's my uh, driving impression with this 350 F Sport. Okay, now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior space. Because it's the F-Sport, we have unique seats and they are absolutely phenomenal. Not just because they're finished in red, but because they are ultra comfortable. I like the upper back support here. The bolsters do a great job of keeping you in place and the lower back support is absolutely phenomenal. You also get a new F-Sport steering wheel. It's not a flat bottom or anything, but I do love these side perforations. Really excellent, very nice thing to grip onto. The paddle shifters also look great and they're also satisfying to use. And I still have the same complaints from the previous NX450H that I tested. I, I don't really appreciate this gloss black usage, this uh, black plastic. It's very shiny, shows off a lot of the dust. Uh, Lexus used to not utilize this type of material, but they started to do that now. Uh, I wish they would stop. And um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, one of my little gripes there. Also, this electronic door is totally unnecessary, uh, very extra and very obtuse. I mean, it certainly works fine, right? It's okay. But I guess one of the reasons why I'm a bit sad regarding this electronic door is because this is going to sound silly, but Lexus actually made very beautiful door handles. And it was just a nice part of the interior. And now that's gone, it's just been replaced with this button. So it is what it is. But again, not a big deal. It's just one of those advanced cool things that they are now doing and implementing. You have one touch up and down windows for all four windows. That's great. I do like this bezel-less mirror. And also you can get this optional electronic mirror as well like we have here. Is that necessary? I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you have the car totally loaded up to the brim and you can't see out the, the back window, then you can just flip that switch and you have a digital rear view mirror. It's not bad. It's like a $200 option. It's worth getting, I suppose. Another massive highlight with these new Lexus NX models and a lot of the new Toyota Lexus products is going to be this new 14 inch screen. This is one of my most favorite infotainment screens in the business, not just because it's large, but because it's easy to use, quick to respond, just really well done, looks elegant. And I don't even mind the fact that a lot of the climate control features are buried into the screen. They did a good job implementing it to the point where it's not distracting. It's easy to use. It's easy to reach over. I don't mind it. Plus they gave you physical dials for the temperature as well as the volume and they have a nice heft to it they feel of quality i appreciated this entire interior space feels of quality and solid nothing is creaking and rattling of course another aspect of that is going to be with these doors they feel nice tight and secure they don't feel like a tin can when you close the doors i really enjoy that aspect speaking of that the lexus nx is also a iihs top safety pick plus very safe automobile, and that's going to be something that a lot of families are going to value. Uh, but pretty much every Lexus product is a IIHS top safety pick. They do great in terms of safety. 
Um, I guess another little complaint that I have is gonna be in regards to this heads up display. I see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to implement a lot of, I guess the gauge cluster slash steering wheel button controls into the heads up display so you, you don't have to take your eyes off the road, but it's not really, it's okay. It's not the best implementation. I've kind of gotten used to it, but it's still not my most favorite way of accessing, I guess these steering wheel button functions, but it is what it is. I'm sure if you bought the car, you owned it for a while, you can get used to it. One of the features I really do like and probably is worth getting is that 360 camera. Unfortunately, it's like a thousand dollars, so I hate their pricing on that, but it is a good feature to have, I suppose. Uh, another feature, if you're into it, you can pay $1,600 and get this Pano moonroof. If you're, once again, if you're into that, uh, I probably would skip that. You can also get a regular sunroof as well. I do like the wireless charging pad. It actually seems to work a little bit more reliably now in this 2023 model. My phone continues to be charged even with my phone case on my iPhone 13. Anyway, uh, you have two cup holders here. I like the fact that the parking brake turns on and off as soon as you put the vehicle into park. I think that's brilliant. The double hinged armrest is cool. It's got plenty of space in it. Same thing with the glove box. That's all very practical. Base 10 speaker audio system is pretty poor. I'm not a fan of it. It does not sound that great. You really do have to step up to that 17 speaker Mark Levinson. And one of the things you have to keep in mind is the fully loaded 450H plug-in hybrid for like 60 grand. You can't even get the ML audio with the 450H, which is a huge bummer, but you can get the ML audio in pretty much all the other NX models like you see here, as well as the 350H hybrid. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the rear seats. Pretty spacious in here, primarily because Lexus was smart in mounting these front seats up a little bit higher to give the rear passengers a little bit extra tow room, which also gives them a bit more uh, leg room as well. Another thing I had the seat push really far back because we have like this easy entry exit thing going on. So once I turned the vehicle off and I get out of the vehicle, the seat gets pushed back. And then I went to the rear seats and I try to sit behind. I can still fit, you know, I'm certainly not stretching out back there like a Maybach, but I can fit and I'm five foot 11. If I scoot over and I sit behind myself at a five foot 11 position, then I still have pretty decent amounts of leg room for sure because I also like the fact that the rear, like the rear of the front seats, it's kind of soft. So you can kind of dig your knees into that seat if you want to. Headroom is excellent both in the front and the rear. That's not a problem. And the trunk is absolutely massive, plenty of space. And also because we don't have that uh, spare tire here, since we have the run flat tires, we can actually lift up the little cargo flap and there's more space underneath there as well if you want to use it. So a very practical, good little package here you know this car overall it's about 183 inches long i believe total so it's easy to drive easy to place out on the road if you're interested in an nx and you can't get the hybrid models that you are seeking after this 350 model with the turbocharged four cylinder has certainly impressed me i'm pretty satisfied with it the f sport get it if you want to i don't mind the way the regular nx drives uh, it's totally fine i just like the extra added level of smoothness, I suppose, that this F-Sport brings. I know smoothness isn't the point of the F-Sport, but that's just the feeling that I got out of it. Um, handling wise, the regular NX was amazing as well. And once again, that 450H, I mean, it weighs like four or 500 pounds more than this vehicle I'm testing here. So handling is not the issue. It's just accessibility and getting access to this vehicle. Because for once, I really love this vehicle, the, the NX lineup. It's worth buying into. One of the things you can do if you're having issues with your local dealerships, I did partner up with a broker in Washington, DC. He's partnered with like four massive dealerships in that area. His name is Auto Companion. You can reach out to him. I think he's offering like three or 4% off MSRP on these NX 350s. I would not suggest leasing the Lexus NX. They are not leasing out very well at all. I think I did a calculation and it was like $900 a month. So the NX is definitely not worth paying $900 for on a lease. Finance or pay cash for it, that's the best way to take advantage of this. Those are all my detailed thoughts regarding the NX. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the description box. I'm sorry, the comment section below and check out the 450H review I did. I'll have it on the end screen here. Click on it and I'll see you there.